Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.0 and Eagle Dynamics F16C Viper Module. Welcome to Tutorial 5, Maverick Missiles. Today we're going to learn how to employ the AGM-65 Maverick Missile uh, in a couple of different variants. The F-16 is capable of carrying the uh, AGM-65D, which is the infrared guided model with the small shaped charge warhead. That's a 57 kilo warhead. It can also carry the G model, which is the same, but with a larger warhead, 136 kilos, and a penetrating blast fragmentation uh, version of that warhead. So basically it detonates after impact. Um, it can also carry the H model, uh, which is a CCD guided, one with basically a normal camera, not infrared. Uh, that the H model has a 57 kilo shaped charge warhead. And finally, it can also carry the K model, which is again CCD, but with a 136 kilo penetrating blast fragmentation warhead. Today, we're carrying two of the smaller uh, Maverick missiles on the aircraft. So here, out on the left wing, I have an AGM-65D. That's the infrared model. You can uh, identify it visually because it's green uh, and it has this kind of golden aperture on the front. And if we go over onto the right wing here, I have an AGM-65H, which is the small warhead version of the CCD or your normal visual Maverick and it has a transparent aperture on it. So we're going to practice with these two today and we're going to practice employing these without the targeting pod because of course I've not covered the targeting pod as yet. So without the targeting pod there are three methods of employment. Pre-planned, which means we use our current sensor point of interest, which uh, without the targeting pod that's going to be a, a steer point. Visual, which is where we can use a HUD designation cursor to guide the Maverick, and this is ground stabilized, so wherever you leave the cursor is where the missile continues to point. And then finally we have boresight mode, where there is just a cross on the HUD and you it's not ground stabilized, so as you maneuver the aircraft the cross moves. Um, so you can, it's a very, very quick, simple target of opportunity acquisition mode, where you maneuver your aircraft, lock and fire. So I'll demonstrate all three of these methods uh, at the target range. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start up the aircraft now. There's not really that much in the way of setup for these missiles, so you'll see me next at the range where we'll begin employing these two missiles. Okay, you join me back in the cockpit of the F-16. We're inbound the range. Uh, let's get set up to employ our first Maverick in pre-planned mode. So, first thing we want to do is enable air-to-ground master mode. And that's immediately going to change some of the symbology in the HUD and set up our displays. Uh, Left-hand display is currently fire control radar. I don't want that, so I'm going to press the FCR and choose the weapon page. And we now have the weapon page up on the left-hand side. Um, on the right-hand side, we have the stores management page. Uh, and I'm currently... I have steer point 1 selected as my current steer point. You can see there's a diamond there on the HUD. That is actually co-located with the eastern bomb circle, which is going to be uh, my target location for today. Let's uh, focus down on the right-hand uh, MFD first and go through the, sim the kind of information that we have on this screen. So first thing we have is our current mode. We're in air to ground. I can switch to gun mode and just do a gun strafe if that's my intention. Pressing it again will take me back to air to ground mode. It then confirms to me the current mode that I'm going to operate my Maverick in. Uh, I'll go through this a little bit later, but uh, we basically have pre-planned visual and bore sight. I'm going to leave this just now because I will change it in a moment. Uh, as always, we have the inventory page. I can click this and confirm what's hanging off the jet. Uh, number of gun rounds, uh, inner pylons have got the fuel tanks, uh, middle pylons have got the two AGM-65s, the Mavericks. Outer pylons are empty, and wingtips are currently carrying AMRAAM missiles. If I press inventory again, I can pop out of there. 
and the control page. For the Maverick, the control page allows us to configure automatic power on. Now, just like I showed you with the Harrier, Mavericks require three minutes to cool and spin up their gyros. Uh, you can do this manually, which I have already done, uh, and I'll show you how you do that in just a sec. Or, if it's a longer mission, it's quite good to have this happen automatically at a given location. So you can choose a steer point. Let's say we wanted to auto power on at steer point one. I could choose one, press enter, and it's gonna be one. And we can then choose um, if it sh should power on after we pass north of, east of, south of, or west of that steer point. And then I would simply enable auto power on. And back on the main page, it confirms that I'm doing auto power on. I'm going to turn that off again, though. If you're doing it manually, you simply press this button until this says power on. By default, it says power off. We also have the option to ripple the missiles. Um, if you are carrying the Mavericks on the LAU-88 rack, which we are not today, uh, you have the option of firing more than one Maverick each time you press launch at the same target. Uh, the LAU-88 can only carry the small warhead Mavericks, and it allows you to carry one, two, or three per pylon for a maximum of six. Only pylons three and seven can carry Mavericks on the F-16. Uh, today we're simply carrying the missiles in the, you know, singly on the pylon. Um, and that's the only way that you can carry the heavy uh, warhead versions, the G and the K. So you can only carry two of the heavy warhead ones, but you can carry up to six of the small warhead Mavericks. Uh, and this is how you would set up a, a multiple release for those. We're not going to do that today though, we're going to leave the ripple on one. If I zoom out now and go over to our left MFD, uh, we're going to see exactly what kind of information that displays. So the weapon page primarily displays the video feed from the missile seeker. Uh, we then can stand by or operate the missile uh, using this button. I don't think that's actually modeled yet though. We can change the mode of the missile just like we can on the SMS. We can change the field of view, although you would normally use the, uh, the field of view button on your HOTAS to do that. This is not currently soy though, so I can't. Uh, we have confirmation of which missile we're firing. We have one AGM-65D, the infrared model, small warhead. And then we have the polarity. I can change it to hot on cold or cold on hot. And that's how we control that on here. Um, for the large warhead versions of the missile, there's also an option here that says area. If I cycle it past these two, I would then get one that says area. That is for force correlate mode, which I'm not going to cover today. Uh, normal tracking of the Maverick is what's called centroid track, and that simply means that whatever you point the missile at, it will aim for the very center of that object, centroid. Um, force correlate allows you to designate a point on the target. Now, of course, this is only going to work for a large target, like a building or a ship or something like that, but it is actually possible in the large warhead versions to uh, slew the, the cursor over a particular point on the target and have it track that instead. So if there's like a weak spot on a building or a particular part of a ship that you want to hit, you can use force correlate. But the small warhead versions of the missile do not have this capability. Okay, and lastly, let's take a little look at the heads up display. Um, Oh, actually, we're in visual mode, so there's not that much to see here. Let's go down here. We're going to change it from visual. There's also boresight mode, and then press it again. We go into pre-planned mode. And without a targeting pod, that is going to target the current steer point, because the current steer point is our sensor point of interest. And now you can see we've got some more symbology. The box is showing us where uh, the, the sensor point of interest is. That's exactly where the diamond for the steer point was previously, so that's good. We have a steering line so that we can steer our aircraft towards the target, and we also have range information down the right-hand side. Scale is 20 nautical miles. Current range to our uh, to our SPI is 18 nautical miles, uh, shown by this correct. We then have maximum and minimum ranges for the missile to be employed. And that's pretty much everything you're going to get here. One very important thing to note is that this range is calculated to the steer point. If you start slewing the missile around, uh, the point at where you're pointing the missile is probably no longer at this range, and the system will not be able to give you accurate range information. Uh, because we don't have the air-to-ground radar uh, or implemented as yet, uh, or the laser on the targeting pod, we have no way of measuring the range to exactly what the missile is looking at. So just keep that in mind. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and unpause. We're going to start flying towards the target. I'm going to press uh, display management switch aft. And that should make... Yes, that's made the Maverick my uh, sensor of interest. I'm now going to press target management switch aft. And it's immediately going to slew to my target. I'm going to press expand my field of view. And I'm going to press... Hmm, actually, maybe I won't do it yet. You'd normally press TMS forward to try and lock the target. But I'm actually a bit far away. You're usually best trying to do that at about 7.5 miles. So let's uh, continue flying inbound. Yeah, I was starting to fly a bit off target as well. One other thing to note is that the cross that you see on the Maverick video, that's the relative direction in which your seeker is looking. So you can see right now, seeker is pretty much uh, straight on, but looking down a bit, and that's because the target is below us. So I'm going to continue flying inbound just like this, 11 miles, and I'm going to focus down on here. I'm going to press TMS forward. It's trying to lock. And that looks like a failed lock to me. I am a little bit too far out. Let's press aft. And then forward again. There we go. Now it has collapsed. Uh, and that's a lock. I'm going to push weapon launch. Oh, master arm is not on. Master arm on. Now I'm going to press weapon launch. Rifle. And off goes our AGM-65D. Whizzing through the air. And this is a completely fire and forget missile. It will continue to track that target based on its infrared heat signature. And uh, we could now leave the target area safe in the knowledge that that is going to successfully strike its target. But let's just watch it. Shag. Excellent hit. Okay, I'm going to get set up again, and next I'm going to demonstrate visual mode. Be right back. Okay, you rejoin me once again inbound the range. Setup is the same, except this time I've chosen visual mode. Uh, so the first thing we need to do in visual mode is press display management switch up. We then have this asterisk here in the HUD, and you'll notice that uh, the Maverick now no longer says soy, uh, and it immediately moved to the TDC box that we have in the HUD, which by default is on the... Um, flight path marker. So I'm going to maneuver down a little bit here and then I'm going to start slewing the box and the great thing about this is the box is actually somewhat ground stabilized or at least it's supposed to be. Uh, if I move this down to a particular location press TMS forward there we go. Now it's ground stabilized. That's, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, I'm going to move the TDC box in the area of the uh, the waypoint. Actually, I need to be TMS aft again. Move the box down to roughly where I think the target is. Which is about here. TMS forward will point the missile at it. I'm going to fov in. Just refine it. TMS forward. I have a lock. And I'm going to fire. That was pretty quick and easy. So that's the visual mode. You're basically steering it using the HUD designation cursor. I'm now going to switch to the other missile, and we're going to switch to boresight mode. So in boresight mode, we have this cross on the HUD, and it is fixed in position. So I can simply move that over a target that I would like to engage. Press TMS forward. Nope, I need to actually pull out. That was a good hit, by the way, in the previous one. Let's get back up. I'm going to go TMS aft, just to make sure that it is completely uh, undesignated. And we're going to have another go at engaging that. So let's get some range between us and the steer point. We're at a slightly lower altitude this time as well. Okay, let's come around... We're going to have some smoke now as well, which will make it much easier for us to find our target. 
Although we do have it designated as a steer point in any case. So coming around on the target area, there we go. There's the smoke. That makes it very nice and easy for us to figure out what we're aiming at. Going to throttle back a bit. Get the cross on the target. Go TMS forward. And rifle. So if you have a, a, a target of opportunity that you want to very quickly fire on, the bore sight mode is perhaps what you're after. I'm just going to overfly that. Oof, that was another perfect hit. Fantastic. Uh, you have to get quite close, of course, to be able to use that mode. So uh, it's not as safe as pre-planned or visual modes, but um, in a pinch, you can use that. So those are the standard employment methods for the AGM-65D and AGM-65H, that's the small warhead versions. Um, the exact same methods apply to the G and K, except of course they have a larger warhead, and they have the possibility to force correlate. That's pretty much everything. In a later tutorial, I will cover how to do handing off mode, which requires the targeting pod, and uh, that's pretty much going to cover all the different employment methods for the Maverick missile. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please, as always, subscribe, like, comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you all next time.